The international standards set out by ISO 50001 can apply to any organisation, whether they're a global conglomerate or a local SME. This is because the standard gives best practices for energy management, which can be scaled up or down to suit your size or budget. All you need to do is complete a conformity assessment to show that you're able to meet the standard requirements. You can then implement the standard throughout your company or start with one area and build up from there. To prove that you're meeting the standard, you'll need to undergo a management system audit. This can be internal or external. Under ISO 50001, organisations are able to self-certify. So long as you've implemented everything correctly, this could save you money, especially for SMEs. However, it's worth thinking carefully about whether this is the best option for you in the long run. Firstly, an external audit can improve your position in the marketplace. Also, in line with Article 8 of the EU Energy Efficiency Directive, organisations may have to show that their systems are vetted by a certified external body and can be able to demonstrate that an energy audit has taken place as part of ISO 50001. You could gain valuable insights from an external audit. Auditors can give tips on making improvements and advise on any areas you overlooked or misunderstood. In fact, many small organisations decide to use an external auditor the first time round purely to make sure they're heading in the right direction. So, how long will it take to implement ISO 50001? This really depends on scale. An office building could be ready in two to six months, but an organisation the size of the Navy may well take a year or more. Much of this comes down to how you define the boundaries of your organisation. As you can see here, under ISO 50001, an organisation can either be a complete company, firm, institution and so on, or it can be one small part of it, so long as that section has control over its own energy use and consumption. You might decide to treat your whole business as a single organisation, or you might prefer to implement the system in one or a combination of parts. As a result, your organisation could be very simple or very complex with lots of different types of energy uses to assess. The more complicated it is, the more training, resources and data collection you'll need. All of this will affect how quickly ISO 50001 can be put in place. Hopefully, you now have a good idea of what ISO 50001 is and how to implement the standard. To finish, let's recap on our top 10 tips to help you get along. Firstly, make sure you get senior management to commit fully to the implementation. Without their support, it will fail. Secondly, if you already have an energy management system in place, the chances are you won't have to start from scratch. You may be able to use ISO 50001 to make improvements or cover new areas. If you have a corporate social responsibility or sustainability department, do make use of it. Establish a specific energy group or subset to organise support and additional resources. At the planning stage, make sure you identify the key roles that are needed, how responsibility will be shared and the key milestones that you'll need to aim for along the way. These milestones could include completing an energy review or developing and implementing an action plan. Other ISO management systems such as ISO 9001 and 14001 follow the same plan, do, check, act logic. If you have these, consider integrating them. Some external auditors can certify integrated management systems, saving you the cost of getting each individual system certified. It's worth shopping around. Don't just limit your new management practices to ISO, just ISO 50001 or 14001. Adapt the basic principles of your standard for your entire business. Review your ISO 50001 system regularly. 
This will ensure that you are continually improving it and refreshing the process. People find change interesting. Keep your colleagues updated with regular news and updates about your progress. Share any knowledge gained from the auditor. Gain or solicit feedback, not just from your employees, but your supply chain, customers and other parties that are relevant to your organisation. Act on their opinion. You can make this part of the energy planning and review process or do it after the action plan has been put in place. Did things work the way you expected them to? How would you do things differently in the next cycle of continual improvement? And finally, keep staff motivated by having realistic and achievable targets. You may wish to have an employee incentive scheme. The more your staff are engaged and motivated, the more likely that your ENMS implementation will be successful.